I've had access to Valve's new MOBA Deadlock for quite a while, and I think it's time I make a beginner's guide about things if you're just picking up the game, or maybe you've been playing the game just as long, and you haven't picked up on these few things yet. And as always, if you're new here, or find yourself coming back on the regular and you aren't already subscribed, why not? You're coming back anyways. But anyways, on to the guide. Now when it comes to this game as it is a hero shooter, you can think of it kind of as Overwatch, as there's tanks, supports, and even DPS. Now when it does come to this game, this game is a MOBA so it doesn't really matter what character you actually choose from, you can build it as a DPS, a tank, or even a support, it's just all on your preference as it's basically build what you want. So when it comes to movement in this game, there's either going to be 2 or 3 stamina bars depending on which character you choose from. For example on Yamato, there's 1, 2, 3 stamina bars, so that means I can dash once, dash twice, and double jump. Now you could also double jump twice and dash or whatever you want. Control is your default crouch button. As you can see, crouch. And if you pair it with a dash, you can actually slide. So dash, crouch, and you're sliding. While you're sliding, you have infinite ammo. If you can combo a dash with a jump at the right time, you get a nice speed boost. As you can see, dash, jump and I get a speed boost. Now keep in mind when you are doing the dash jump, you need at least two stamina bars, as the dash is gonna require one and the jump after is actually gonna take up another stamina bar. As you can see, it took up two. So try to keep that in mind when you're trying to perform this movement. Just like other games, there's air strafing in this game, which is always useful to help get away. Combine it with the dash if you really want to. Then a the key item that you should always be buying is extra stamina gives you another stamina bar for Yamato, you'll end up getting four, which is actually insane. So keep that in mind when you're playing this character or just other characters in general. Now, not only does your character have the primary left click and one, two, three, and four, but you also have the ability to melee by pressing Q if your keyboard is default. So Q, you can charge up a punch by holding Q. And if you press F, you can parry. Now, when it comes to CSing or getting money from the little minions, you can shoot them, get them low, and then you shoot the orb to get more. Now you can melee them, and it automatically gives you the orb, but you're at a greater risk of taking damage from an enemy laner. Now leveling up your ability is pretty self-explanatory, usually you want to max out your first ability with most characters, and you can see, if I put one in charge, it's going to increase the damage, I won't let my family down. and if I uh, say I upgrade again, it'll be plus 70 damage, this so now it does 175 instead. So it's always good to be aware of what ability you're actually upgrading and what you should be looking no out for. Typically, to. like I said, you want to be maxing out your one, usually for most characters first. Two is typically your movement ability. Four, of course, max this out second if you can. So there's two different types of damage output in this game when you come to the shop. The first one is being the physical damage for the weapon. This is going to be your left click fire. So this ability. Holding a left click, it's your physical damage. All of these will increase it or give it a plus. Now, Spirit is the equivalent to AP from League of Legends or Dota. This is all about your abilities, making your abilities do more damage. Typically, it's based on what character you're playing and what you're really looking to optimize. For instance, if I was playing Yamato, I think extra charge is always a great option to have because you get a third Q shot. You can also come to builds. Another thing that's really cool is that you can search through other people's builds if you're trying to find one that really suits you. As you can see, I have my build, so make sure to give it a favorite. Continuing on when you're actually selecting your character, as you can see in this screen, you can select up to three characters, and by pressing right click on any of the characters that you have selected, you can increase their priority up to two times. Say for instance, you really want to play Yamato, you would make him your highest priority, so right clicking it twice. And for your second character, if you somehow don't get Yamato, whatever you're most comfortable on next, I would put it as a priority. Then the last character can be a fill for whatever character you want, and simply keeping it as standard. Unlike other MOBAs, this game actually has four different lanes. A yellow, a orange, a blue, and a purple, and of course with quote unquote a jungle surrounding them all. Now again, just like other MOBAs, you can request to swap lanes with your teammate if you want to play with your friend, or you just want to have a better set of combos on a single lane. Typically the lanes are split like this, two solo lanes, and then two duo lanes. Now you don't really get to pick and choose if you get a solo or a duo lane, sometimes it's completely random, but if you are queued up with a friend, at least from my understanding, is that you're supposed to have a higher chance of playing with your 
friend in the same lane. Again, it just all depends. So now let's actually talk about CSing or essentially how you earn money in this game. Well, I guess in this game, they're called souls. CSing is pretty self-explanatory, just like other mobile games. It's the art of getting money by killing minions. Now they do it a little differently in this game. So upon the last hit of a minion, a soul orb will pop out, a little ball you can shoot. You shoot this ball to get money. Now do keep in mind, if you shoot the orb and you aren't prepared, the enemy can shoot it, denying the CS, and in turn, they end up gaining the money. So you always want to be on your toes or aware, that even though it's super easy to CS in this game, you could easily lose that CS just as fast. Now another thing that's really cool about this game, is that if you feel like you have enough HP to keep fighting, but you have a lot of money or souls collected, and you still have your first tower, you don't have to go all the way back to the base. There's actually a shop right next to the first tower that you're allowed to buy from, and you can pretty much use it whenever you want, but once your first tower is gone, you lose that shop. It's really good if you have the advantage and you want to keep putting pressure on your lane. Take for example, if you have one teammate dealing a whole bunch of damage, pressuring the enemy laners, you can easily go back and quickly buy and come back with an advantage, but as you can get an advantage, so can your enemies. So keep that in mind. Now, not only do you earn souls, gold, or whatever you want to call it from the lane, you can also earn it from jungle camps or however you want to call it in this game. So at the start of the game, you can see you get the lane. Then there's a couple things to notice on the map. The green triangles you see on the map, those indicate that there's jungle camps that are alive and that you can take. Now the other green icons on the map, the one that looks kind of like a house, well, it's your shop. The best way that I've found when you're trying to get as much souls or money as possible is that once you shove a wave so when you kill all of the enemy minions before any of your friendly minions die that's when i'll take the time to clear your jungle camp the jungle camps are fairly fast to take care of and you should be able to come back in time to catch the next wave now again, unlike Dota, Smite, and League of Legends, there's no dedicated jungler, so everyone on your team, besides going for your own minions, you should also try to prioritize the jungle camps as best as possible. It's your fastest way to get ahead in this game. Now after you deal with the laners and all the minions and the enemy towers 1 HP, your main objective now as well to take care of the tower. You want to destroy it as fast as possible, and of course, as safe as possible. Each time you deal with the enemy laners, you want to put as much damage as you can into the tower. Because not only after you break the tower, do you get more souls and money, but you actually actually get an ability point. Now the souls that come out of this tower are a little bit special. These spread out to your entire team, so it's another way to encourage you to actually play for your team. Now something to keep in mind in this game is that the towers, the walkers, and the pantheon which is considered the nexus they do a ton of damage so you kind of always want to make sure you have a wave of minions or you get your unsuspecting friend to tank the towers think of the walker as your inhibitor that also deals damage but after your first tower this is the next thing you'll be taking out to get closer to your end game again while taking this out try to get a wave of minions as honestly the walker does insane damage moving past the walker what i like to call it is that you got dumb and dumber to take out two pyro towers that you need to take out to continue to the pantheon or again the nexus of the game. However, just before you get to the Pantheon, there's two shrines that you need to take out, that which essentially shield the Pantheon, or again, the Nexus. So once you have both shrines taken care of, you finally move on to the patron, which in order to do damage to the patron, you have to be inside the pit in front of you, down below, which I failed to do. But once you finally end up destroying the patron, then well, the game is over. And well, you've won. Now I do want to say that I've actually been having a blast playing this game, so if you want to see more deadlock content, make sure to drop a like. I'll definitely make some more guides, character builds, and a lot more. But anyways, going to finish off with some gameplay, and I'll catch you in the next one. A Tracul is a frozen guy. Ah, uh, he's an old, so I can't do anything. I was expecting a challenge. I'll be ready. I do not miss. Yeah, it's you fall off now. Yeah, I hit him all with my ult too. Repositioning. He's just coming to you. Over there. 
The earth has been bombed. 